this is Carol. Um, I want to talk to you today about how do you not let fear overrule you when you're taking your vision to reality. I don't, I don't think of it as a, the imposter syndrome. I think of it as it's, it's amazing. Like you look at these big companies out here, you know, you can see a big building and I start thinking to myself, how the heck did that place get started? Did that get started by somebody having bazillion dollars or did it start like I started my business and I was one person by myself and little by little it grew. I don't know how this works, I really don't. Um, but I was just kind of looking at all the things that I've done this week so far. We're only into Wednesday. Okay, so um, clearly a lot's been going on. Sunday night, I interviewed my business coach, um, Joe Muirhead, who's amazing. And already there's close to 900 watches on that. And I know that she's gotten a number of contacts and people that are wanting to use her, which worries me because I'm like, don't take my business coach away. Cause she's so wonderful. Uh, I'm kidding. I'm, you know, not really worried about that. I am the whole point of doing that was I like to highlight people in my life that I really support so that I could help them. Um, it's, there's no other reason than to let you know, even if you don't use her, there's somebody else that could possibly help you. Just make sure that they're good fits when you're picking a business coach. So I did that on Sunday. Um, I'm trying to think of all the things I'm doing. Okay, so I am also on Friday, I'm gonna be a guest host on a podcast called Thanks For Sharing. And it's about recovery, it's about relationships, it's about um, uh, recovery, relationships. I got a sticky over here about that somewhere. Um, and, um, and I get to talk with these people about that. Now recovery is my heart. I've been involved with it for a long time. And I love the title, Thanks for Sharing perfect because you know if you've been in recovery then you know that you know what sharing is about and if you don't it's just people talking in a group and when you finish you say thank you for sharing um, but to be able to to talk about that is is and to be asked to be on somebody's podcast it's always a privilege so also I spoke to the Chicago School of Psychology yesterday now I know I'm kind of all over the place but because of healing through connection being my my pattern um, I, it all kind of fits in so I spoke on uh, a case study of a couple that um, where the man had been molested as a young child and how did that affect the couple themselves and that was really you know it was a really interesting opportunity I got to speak to some interns and, and a lot of clinicians and um, you know, it's not something you hear much about because, well, it's one of those shame things. It's one of those secrets that men don't want to talk about. And yet it shows up once you're in a relationship. There's no way you can hide it anymore. They know something's wrong, but they just don't know, you know, the, the woman or the, you know, whoever's been molested, the woman and the man would know um, there's triggering points that would set them off. So I got to speak um, to that yesterday, and that was really uh, a privilege with my friend uh, Deborah Warner, and her husband Bob Carey was there, who I've known. Um, we worked together many years ago. Um, I am currently working on an article called Stop Before You Eat, uh, What Are You Hungry For? And I'm not quite ready to submit that. I want to kind of do a read-over on it again. That's going to go to Obesity Help. Um, who I'm going to be on their mental health panel in October. And I love writing these articles because understanding weight loss, I mean, as somebody who's lost 100 and, I don't know, 15 pounds and kept it off for eight years, um, there's a lot of, ah, Nancy, I think you, Nancy, um, there's a lot of uh, emotional stuff and mental stuff that comes from that and it's a privilege to be able to anyway so on top of it um i uh i'm completing some online courses 
I'm going to be doing three online courses and I'm um, working with my business coach to finish the first one because I'm not doing it by myself. I, I tried to do it all by myself and I need a little bit of shove. So once I told her I can't seem to get that thing finished up, she's like, okay, we're going to put that on our to-do list. And then, um, and that's going to be on hoarding. Um, that's the uh, the speaking engagement I like to take all around the country because hoarding is pe people like almost everybody knows somebody that hoards or kind of knows somebody that hoards or has somebody in their family that hoards or collects or whatever. And uh, yet, there's very few cl clinicians that actually understand how that works. And because my mom was a hoarder, I understand living in the hoarding house and um, the thing is this is all about brokenness bottom line is about brokenness so when we are broken it manifests in alcoholism drug abuse uh, eating overeating uh, gambling hoarding many many different ways and so it doesn't matter really what the manifestation is, it's the brokenness from the child that's there. And that's what I want to get to is that child that's sad, that is acting out, that is running the show. Um, even if they're 40, 50, 60 years old, it doesn't matter, the child's still in there and running things. So um, the other thing I wanted to mention is the office. Uh, I think that's the part that is currently the more worrisome. I mean, I'm also writing an article for psychologist uh, psychiatry convention. I'm also going to be speaking at a psychiatry convention in September or something like that. Um, but the thing that that worries me. Okay, so we're at the place where, like, the electric meter goes in. There's. Um, the, we had to get the uh, certificate of occupancy for the location. That can take a while. Cities, you know, they, they take their time or they don't have enough staff or something. So you have to be patient through the process. And um, once we start the move, that's a little scary. And then quadruple, quadruple my operating costs. But we're moving to seven offices, we're going to have a psychiatrist and a, and a psych nurse and so many. Um, I still need to make a call to the nutritionalist um, that I'm hoping can work with us. I, um, I have the practicum students, I have interns, I have psychologists that are willing to be a part of this. I'm just trying to cover every base and really who the heck am I to be doing this? like? you know, big thing. And it's all going through the nonprofit that I founded. I don't know, I guess it's just, it, it's hard for the fear not to say, I'm not gonna be able to make those payments. Um, and yet I remember saying that before I came into my office now and before I went in the office I went to before. And that was never a problem. So I honestly think we're gonna outgrow that new location really quickly. When I went to Los Angeles yesterday and spoke to some of the people, they knew about my organization. They had heard about it. So we're starting to get a, a fairly good name going, which is my hope and goal. And um, there was somebody there that knew me from my videos and that was a little interesting. I mean, I, I'm just me. So I'm just me on video, I'm just me in person. So, she, you know, she knew me. Um, so, how do you let fear not control you? I guess you just take a bite of the elephant, take one bite at a time in order to um, manage how big that elephant's gonna get. I mean, what if it's one of those big buildings down in LA someday? I can't imagine that, but I couldn't imagine this either. So anything is possible. Um, looking forward to so many. Hey, Candy. Um, Candy has been a friend of mine for a long time. And actually, I, I have company coming from Spain soon, a couple weeks, and Candy knows that. I like international um, visitors and, you know, 
I've got beds and to me that they're family and and they come every few years and sometimes I meet them somewhere else and sometimes they come up to my house and uh, our, my kids grew up with them and it's just kind of like a cousin that's not a cousin but we call each other cuz so um, my house is still in process it's gonna get the flooring done next week um, on the downstairs and then my company comes and uh, looking forward to that bottom line uh, I'm scared I'm scared and you know I went through a lot this month I went through some sadness and some brokenness and I'm I'm back I'm not thinking of that anymore uh, that person that decided to leave my life you know in a, in a way I think how sad how sad for him to make that choice and um, I wish I, you know, wish I had some control, but if I was in control of the world, I'd screw it up. So it is what it is. Anyway, there's my friend Bear watching. Um, he likes to call me sissy. Um, so there's a lot of things this week. I mean, just the fact that I got to uh, interview Joe was so huge. She doesn't understand that. I mean, there's almost 900 views right now and it's been like a few days. It's a big deal. But to her, she's just human, I'm just human, so it's not no big deal. I mean, it's just people talking to people. Anyway, um, I am scared. There is this move coming and it's possibly in four weeks. It, it just depends on this, the certificate of occupancy in the new building. Um, if you pray or think, uh, however you choose to do it, if you think to say, I hope that works out for her, okay, like the logistics of the whole thing, how with the move's gonna happen, all the furniture, ugh, I don't even wanna think about that part. Um, but I know that there will be people to help and it will just work out. Anyway, um, you know, having a vision and taking it to reality is no joke. And you just have to take it in small bits. So if you have a vision and you know, if I can do it, you can do it. I am nobody special. I am just somebody else that's willing to take a risk. And I want to live my magnificent life. And for the most part, I really am. I mean, the only thing that would add to that would be my mate someday or not. Other than that, um... I kind of got the perfect life. So that's pretty much it. Um, I thank you, Nancy. I pre appreciate that. I'll, I'll take that prayer. I very much appreciate that. Um, there's just so much going on this week. So I get to go into work in a few minutes and get to see some clients. And that always makes me happy. And uh, I walk in happy and I leave happy. So I'm gonna go take a look at the office and see where it's at, the stage it's at. Cause nobody really tells you. They say they tell you, and then you go in and, and you're not sure if it's more done or less done. So I'm gonna take a look on the way to uh, my job. Anyway, you guys have a great day. Live your magnificent life. Don't stop dreaming. And if you don't know what your dream is, figure it out. Whatever that is, we settle. I've settled and I know what my dream is now like I'm kind of getting it all clear I I dream now that by next year that I'm um, going all over the country and speaking about healing from past hurts way I'm sorry that was my VA calling trying to give me a message um, I have a good day and I will see you guys soon